what is apposition? And what's the difference between apposition and adjective? And how does it make a difference to our translation? Well, we're going to answer these questions in this video. Hi, I'm Daryl Burning from Master New Testament Greek, here to help you with the tools, habits, and system to help you master the Greek of the New Testament so you can read it fluently. If that sounds interesting to you, go ahead, hit the subscribe button, then hit the notify bell to be notified when new videos are released. In this video, we're going to take a look at the distinction between adjectives and apposition. So let's start by taking a look at adjectives. What is an adjective and how are they formed in Koine Greek? Well, of course, you'll know that adjectives describe a head noun. So for instance, with the phrase like the strong man, the word strong modifies the noun man. So we have a man who's described as being strong. That's what an adjective does. It just describes a noun. Adjectives are not always used in exactly this way. Sometimes they can be used as a noun in their own right. So for instance, only the strong survive. And here the adjective strong is functioning as a noun in its own right. And the article before that, the word the in English, is indicating that the word strong here is becoming more than just an adjective, it's actually working as a noun in its own right. We sometimes also see adjectives uh, modifying verbs. So for instance, first walk to the store. And so here the word first, the adjective first, which you can say the first man, which would work fine as a sentence, the word first here is modifying walk. And walk is a verb. So the word first, the adjective here, is actually modifying a verb. And so in this way, it crosses over into the realm of an adverb. But adjectives, for the most part, are used to describe a noun. Sometimes the way they describe that noun is in what we call a predicate construction. So for instance, the man is strong. And here the words is strong is a predicate. And the word strong is still describing the man, but it's doing so within this predicate construction using the verb is to predicate a description of the man. But let's take a look at this first construction here, the strong man. Now in Greek, this is what's called an attributive adjective. In other words, the adjective is attributing a quality to the word man, to that noun. Now there are four ways that adjectives can do this in Greek. There are four different constructions you find in the Greek of the New Testament particularly to indicate an attributive adjective. The first one here is called the first attributive and this is where you get the article, the word the, followed by the adjective, followed by the substantive. In this case the adjective is generally going to be more prominent than the head noun. So the focus really is on the adjective, the describing word, more than on the head noun. And so for instance, the holy city in Matthew chapter 4 verse 5. The same goes with the perfect love, hey taleia, right? Article plus the adjective followed by the noun agape. And so these are our first attributive adjectives found in the New Testament. There's also the second attributive. This is where you get the article plus the substantive, then the article plus the adjective. Now when you get this construction, the adjective and the substantive share equal weight. And this is part of why you got the article before both of them. So for instance, if your right eye causes you to stumble, or here in Revelation 9-2, he judged, or he has judged, the great prostitute, okay? The great prostitute, the prostitute, the great one. So this is the second attributive position. There's also the third attributive position where you get the substantive followed by the article followed by the adjective. In the third attributive position, the adjective is giving a little more details, particularizing the substantive. So for instance, Babylon the Great. As you can see in this example, these tend to follow proper nouns. Now there's also a fourth attributive position, but this is anathrist. There is no article. It's just the substantive and the adjective, and it could go in either order. So it could be adjective, then substantive, or substantive, then adjective. So for instance, by the Holy Spirit, by the Spirit Holy, right? The Holy Spirit. Or you know, as a wise master builder. So these are different attributive adjectival positions that you find in Koine Greek. Now, apposition, on the other hand, is not going to use an adjective. It's going to use a substantive, a noun with another substantive. Okay, now both of these nouns are going to refer to the same thing. They're both talking about the same entity. There's no distinction between them. And that also means that they're going to have the same relationship to the rest of the clause. So for instance, the Passover was near the feast of the Jews. And here to Pascha, the Passover is has got this hey iorte referring back to it later on. And hey iorte, just like to pasca, both of these are in the nominative, 
Both of them have the same verb following them. Both of them are near. The feast of the Jews could also said, be said to say, you know, it was near. The feast of the Jews was near. And so both of these refer back to the same thing. And this is therefore apposition. Uh, in Mark chapter 14, verse 67, and you were with the Nazarene Jesus. Okay, so here the Nazarene is your substantive, and then Esther is your verb. This is in a perfect tense form of a me. You only find this twice in the New Testament. And so this is you were with the Nazarene. That is Jesus, right? Jesus was therefore being renamed the Nazarene. And so in this case, you have the Nazarene is the substantive, and Te Yesu, or Jesus, is your appositional. Okay, so this is apposition. Now, let's talk about some of the more difficult constructions. This gets a little tricky at times. So Mark chapter 1, verse 11. Look at the piece that I've highlighted here. This, you are my son. But then, how do you take the ho agapetos on the end of this, right? You are my, and you've got two choices. You are my beloved son, which makes takes it as an adjective. And this is how the New American Standard and the ESV and the RSV translate it. Or do you regard this as an apposition? You are my son, the beloved. Or, as the NIV puts it, you are my son whom I love. Now, how do you decide between these two options? So you've got pretty major uh, translations on both sides of this. So how are you going to decide? Well, let's talk through how to distinguish an adjective from an apposition. And the first principle is, is the modifier an adjective or is it a noun? Remember, an apposition, you have one noun and a second noun, and they both refer back to the same entity. So in this case, is the modifier, ho agapetos, in this case, is this an adjective or a noun? Well, it's an adjective. If you go look this form up in BDAG, it's going to be an adjective. But then that leaves the question is, well, doesn't the article substantiate that adjective and therefore the adjective is functioning as a noun? And that's the case for the apposition. And so we need to ask a second question. Is the modifier in an adjectival position? That's the second question here. And so in this case, is ho agapetos here in an adjectival position. And if you remember from just a few moments ago when I went through the, the adjectival positions, this is in the second attributive adjective position. So with the second attributive position, you have the article followed by your head noun, followed by the article, followed by your adjective. And in that case, both the adjective and the head noun have equal force to them. So this is in fact an adjectival construction. So the in a, the New American Standard, the ESV, and so on, this is the better translation in this case. Because there's a little bit of discussion over this, we want to compare it to a similar construction. And Matthew 5.29 is a really good example of this, where if your right eye causes you to sin. Now, nobody, no translation at all translates this appositionally. That is to say, they don't translate it saying, your eye, the right Nobody does that. It doesn't even make any sense in English. So why would the Mark 1 11 verse make any sense either? And it's just because beloved is often used and is substantiated using or nominalized using an article. And so that's the only distinction here, really. So in both cases, you have got a second attributive adjective position and you've got an adjective in that position. And so in both these cases, these are very clearly adjectives. But what about a slightly more difficult one? What about Mark 1540? Among whom also Mary the Magdalene. Okay, now obviously when you're used to this in English, it's Mary Magdalene. Nobody makes any distinction about this. But should this be treated appositionally or should this be treated as an attributive adjective? So again, let's go through these questions. Is the modifier an adjective? Well, if you go and look this up in BDAG, BDAG is going to list it with an article, and then it's going to follow that with a substantival use of Magdalenos, which is actually an adjective. So there is no place called Magdalena. You find a place called Magdala, and then you have this adjectival feminine form of Magdalene, which is to say this is a person or a woman from Magdala. Now, the, fem the masculine form of this is Magdalenos, and this is the form you'll find in the parenthesis in BDAG. So this is actually an adjective. And so we find an example of this in Mark chapter 14, where we were just a moment ago. You were also with the Nazarene. Okay, so here, Nazareno is an adjectival form of the idea of Nazareth, right? This is a man from Nazareth. And this is therefore an adjectival form derived from the proper noun of a town 
to indicate this is where you're from. You find the same thing in Acts 17, 21, where you've got the Athenians. Now, in both of these cases, the article substantiates or nominalizes the adjectival form. You were with the Nazarene. So in this case, what about Mary Magdalene? And so again, we have to ask the question, well, is the article here nominalizing the adjective to make this into a nominative, right? In which case it'd be Mary, namely the Magdalene. But again, we have to ask that second question, is the modifier an adjectival position? And here, yes, it is. And so in this case, it's in the third attributive position. That is, you get the the substantive, Mary, then the article and the adjective. And so this is, again, an adjectival construction. And so we find the same thing in Revelation 14 verse 8, Babylon the Great. And so you could say the Great Babylon, right? That would be a legitimate translation of that. And so you could translate this here as Mary Magdalene or Magdalene Mary. And this latter translation is very similar to how we might translate Basileus Ho Agathos, the good king, where Ho Agathos, we end up in English putting that prior to your head now. So Magdalene Mary works similarly in that sense if you wanted to translate it that way. Now the interesting thing about Mary Magdalene particularly is that when she's, when you see her name, it's always going to be in this third attributive form except twice. One of these is in Luke chapter 24, verse 10, the Magdalene Mary, right? Very explicitly putting the adjective up front to identify her from the adjective. Or in Luke chapter 8, verse 2, Mary, the one called Magdalene. And this uses a participle to make this explicit. And so the addition here of hey Magdalene has become an epithet, an addition to her regular name in order to distinguish her from other women called Maria or Mary in the Gospels. And so when we find Mary Magdalene, we just call her Mary Magdalene because she's the Mary that comes from Magdala, right? And so she's just called the Magdalene Mary. So in summary, remember the two rules for distinguishing an adjective from an appos from apposition. The first one is, is the modifier an adjective or a noun? If it's an adjective, you may well have an adjectival construction. But the second question is also important. Is the modifier in an adjectival position? If the answer is yes to both of these questions, then you definitely have an adjective on your hands. If the answer is no, then you may be looking at an appositional form. To test an appositional form, use phrases like namely or that is. For instance, the Passover was near, that is the feast of the Jews. That makes total sense, and you can see that that is an appositional phrase. Similarly, in Mark chapter uh, 14, you were also with the Nazarene, namely Jesus, right? And so in both these cases, you can see that this test works. Don't get stuck with adjectives and appositions. Just make sure you understand the distinction and you can understand how adjectives work and you won't have any trouble translating any of these. If this has been helpful and you're interested in learning more, go down to masterntgreek.com slash roadmap and pick up my free roadmap where you can learn the steps from wherever you are right now all the way through the fluency of the Greek New Testament. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button, hit the notify bell. That way you'll be notified when new videos are released and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. In the meantime, keep taking small steps towards mastery. See you soon.